I want to I want to start a video by saying call Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah Bahashem Hakadosh. Double honors to the apostles and elders. A great millstone the rule will. Shalom on to you brothers out there preaching and teaching the truth worldwide. And I want to say shalom on to hopefully today's lesson is getting to about the collapse of the dollar. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's, it's the, this, this petrodollar, this Edomite um, dollar hegemony that it has, that they grip around the whole world, is slowly collapsing. <clears throat> so, yeah, I got a short clip that I'm, that I'm going to play. Then I'm going to get into some scriptures. Lapse of you think is coming is a recession. What your crazy friends might say to you is coming is maybe a depression. You'd be mistaken. Those are lies. What is coming is a collapse of the dollar. You haven't had one of those. We've never experienced the collapse of the dollar of the world's reserve currency. This will make us Venezuela. Make no mistake. If you want to be prepared, prepare yourself like people should have prepared in Venezuela. Soon, I don't know when, but it will happen overnight. Soon, everything will be collapsing and the banks will close and there will be chaos you think is coming is a recession. So yeah, hey, the collapse of uh, this American dollar, this petrol dollar, is imminent. The scripture, uh, we can support this through the scriptures, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem I'm gonna go through some scriptures. Uh, Lincoln, I think it's Glenn Beck, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure that's. I think that's who it is. But anyway, I mean, hey, they laying it out there. See, these now Edomites, they prepare carnally. But you Israelites, you're preparing. It's going, it's the scriptures spiritually. So it's being these scriptures spiritually, getting yourself prepared for what's coming. Because it's kind of like if you, uh, I never was a boxer, but I'm pretty sure, uh, if you brace for something, you can take that blow a whole lot better than you get caught with uh, like a uh, just a random right hook. That should knock you the fuck out. Here it is. If you know something coming, you can tense up and you can absorb the blow. Versus here it is. You turn around and you get like a defensive wide receiver. Someone come across the middle and knock, knock the nigga straight out. Versus you see the, the DB or the the safety coming up, getting ready to hit. You can kind of like you know you can brace yourself for it, for the uh, for the tackle and then jump back up. But if you come across the middle, you get ready to make that first cut. You got a DB or the middle linebacker just waiting on you. you got a nigga like Ray Lewis waiting on you. He'll lay you flat out. So that's what's coming. The collapse of the dollar. Have you just saying it's gonna happen overnight? Jake on he got had that 401k. Shit gonna be gone overnight. The collapse of the dollar. So <coughs> let's let's do it. Alright, this book is Zephyr now. Chapter 1, verse. I'm read verse 10 and 11. And it shall come to pass, meaning that it will come. Now, it might come, you know, the Lord might think about it one day to pull up. Nope. He said, and it shall come to pass in that day, said Yahweh, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate. So what? what is, when you go into, you know, what, uh, the marketplace, fish gate, those, that's a place of trade and commerce. You come by and buy different things. And then howling from the second. And a great crashing from the hills. Yeah, that's going to the stock market crashing. When this this dollar, this this United States petrodollar is crashed on the world stage. <clears throat> how ye how ye inhabitants of Mattas 
for all the merchant people are cut down. All they that bear silver are cut off. So yeah, America, Babylon, great. It's the number one market, uh, consumer marketplace in the world. Here it is. We only have 300 some million people. China has, let's look at China's population. It's like some of, I got this right here. I'm going to pull. Let's, let's go. China population. They have, ooh, look at it. They even put the comparison up there for me. China has 1.4 billion people. That was in 2021. India has 1.4 billion people. That was in 2021. United States has 331 million people. So here it is. Those two countries between the two is 2.8 billion people. We only have 331 million people. All right, so 2.8, 331 million. Let's, let's, let's look at this. Now, these are the largest consumer markets. United States is the largest consumer market in the world. So we're consuming them roughly by this HFCF stands for Household Final cons Consumption Expenditure, which represents consumer spending in nominal terms. So here it is, United States, 18 million, whatever that number's supposed to be, that's like the, whatever you saw fucking fit, figure he got. You got China at 8 million. And then what was the India? India is at 2 million. So between them two countries, let's, let's just, let's, 8 and 2 is 10, let's just, so that's 7, let's just round it up to 11 million, however they figure this up. United States has 18 million just by itself. They only have 330 some million people. Between the two of those, that's 2.8 billion people. So between those two, United States is is killing them as far as consumer market. So you don't think that hey, hey, the Lord is setting this up beautiful. That's the reason why all these countries. You know, through the spirit, they have to kind of gang up together and try to bring this whore down. Because it's, it's, this whore is fucking massive. This is a massive spending power. The average, you know, American citizen, two, three, some people got four and five vehicles. It's just, this is just buy, buy, buy. Here it is. Average person may have two phones. Got two phones, two or three computers. You know, a tablet. Each room has a television in it. Your main living room, you got a TV. Your bedrooms, they all have televisions. So this is just a consumer country. This country is built on consumerism. Pretty sure some of these third world countries, they may, they if they have a television, they may only have one. But here, every fucking room has a TV. Kitchens have televisions. Some people have um, little, they have TVs on their decks. So this is a consumer-based um, economy. Even when I remember when I was a kid, you would have these little um, seven-inch monitors you would put on the headrest. That way when you're traveling, you put the little TV in, in your um, vehicle. So this, this country is built on consumerism. As you can see, we only have 330 some million people, but it's the largest consumer country in the freaking world. So you got the EU. Oh, Slovakia. Uh, that was they. That was EU Union. That I thought that was eight. I mean, China. China is six. China is 6.8 million. So that eight that I was talking about, referencing, that was actually the European Union. So between China. And in India, that's six and two, eight. That's eight. Let's just say nine, nine million. So that's fucking double. United States household expenditure is double between the two largest as far as population in the world. They got 2.8 billion people. We only have 330 some million people. That's crazy. So between the first. 3, 8, 6, 14, 16, 
Bank 14, 16, 18. So you got to have the EU, China, Japan, and India. 8, 14, and 18. Damn near four different <laughs> economies. India, Japan, China, and the EU just to equate to what America is spending as far as consumer market. So, yeah. Hey, that's the reason why all these countries, it's, it's, uh, when it speaks about in Revelation 18, about the, uh, they, they're going to be crying. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and get that. I don't want to butcher it. I'm going to come back to this for now. Uh, Revelation 18 verse 11 just go to the point and all the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore so when America be destroyed by this thermonuclear destruction we just we just saw how large this consumer uh, how how much this country consumes so they're gonna be like damn this one economy was doing more than a country that has 2.8 billion people between the two of them. They can be like, man, we can't sell no more of these beats by Dr. Dre. But that nigga did. Because he thought he going to have a bunker down there in, in Los Angeles somewhere. And that shit. And the nigga died over here. So uh, he ain't getting no more rap albums. He ain't getting no more of this or that. So they going to be weeping. All the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buys their merchandise anymore. The largest consumer country in the world. It's done away with. The Lord wiped it off the map. Call on Yahweh by Shem Hey, this is beautiful way the Lord is setting it up. So the collapse of this dollar is gonna be monumental. You never seen a a, a a currency that collapses that has this much buying power. Hey, the Lord cold. So I'm gonna jump back in the for now. One. I was in verse what 10. So yeah, so <clears throat> as this was going to, <clears throat> how you inhabitants of Mac test for all the merchant people are cut down, all they that bear silver are, are cut off. So yeah, so man, hey the Lord is setting this place up beautiful for the fall. Beautiful. Here it is. You know, the average, you know, American citizen, I mean, got probably it's what seven days in a week. Got at least seven pair of jeans. At least seven pair of jeans. Not including your work clothes. She's like, because I have work clothes. I have clothes that I run in. I have clothes that are... You people have clothes that they go swimming in. So people have clothing for... Every, people have clothing just to grill in. So this is a very consumer-based economy. People have clothes just to sleep in. I have clothes just to sleep in. All it is just to sleep in and take it off. It's not to wear outside. It's called pajamas. They call it night clothes. <laughs> so this damn devil set it up beautiful. He, this damn devil will, will hey, he got it set up beautiful just, just to take all your damn FRN notes. Sleeping clothes, running clothes, Working clothes, club clothes for the hoes. So and there is clothing for every fucking thing in this um economy. If you think about it, you got your school clothes. You know, kids go to school. They have clothes that you play sports in. You have you have certain things for for niggas going to see white Jesus church clothes. That you take off when you get out of church. Put on something more relaxing. So this economy is set up for consumerism. So I wanted to. Because uh, I was speaking in about that collapse of the dollar. So you know I had this. I think get this revelation 6. It's going into you know. <clears throat> dealing with the collapse of the dollar. <coughs> Because uh, I think in that clip, 
He's speaking about how, speaking about Venezuela when their when their money collapsed, it was just basically hyperinflation. So when that dollar collapses, it's gonna be hyperinflation out there. Well, out here, I'm in America, Babylon, the Great, but my trust is in Yahweh Hashem, Hashem, not in these FRN notes. Because at the end of the day, I understand that those dollars can't save me. The only person that can save me is um, Yahweh Yahweh Shah. Nothing, nothing else can can save me. I can't, I can't go and buy the biggest Beretta, the 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 biggest gun that's got a switch on it. No, uh, none of that shit can save me because at the end of the day, that shit can jam. Or you could be in a position you just at Kroger buying groceries, place get shot up, but you in line, you in aisle ten, you not thinking about your gun. You up there looking at pasta, checking the ingredients. You trying to go gloom free, but <laughs> then you get shot up looking at gloom free items because you want to eat healthier. So hey, <laughs> so right here, Revelation six, verse six, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts and measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. <clears throat> Let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I was going to get that in the blue letter. Someone. All right. God. <clears throat> All right. Revelation 6, verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny. And three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So we go into this word, because you know, basically, uh, speaking about hyperinflation happening when uh, this the collapse of the dollar. So this 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 Greek uh, Greek word G twelve twenty is the Narion that Esau said. Strong's G twelve twenty, Denarion, Denarion, Denarion. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Denarion. Counting ten, a Roman sent uh, civil coin in the New Testament time. It takes its name from it being equal to ten asses. Uh, jump right down. It was the principal civil coin. Of the Roman Empire, from the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, it was seen that the denarii, denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day's wages, basically a day's wages. <clears throat> so whatever you you make, let's just say you make twenty dollars an hour, you work eight hours a day, that's a hundred and what sixty dollars. So it said, and I heard a voice in the midst of four beasts, a measure a week for a penny. And three measures are barley for a penny. So that's saying, basically saying it's taking you three times as much. And three measures are barley for a penny. So if your day wages was $160, it's costing that just to get that item. So here it is. You can go in Kroger right now and buy whatever it is. Let's just say buy a pack of ground beef. You know, a pound of it costs you roughly about. Five forty nine, six forty nine. So, three met three times. And this is a measure of wheat for a penny. Penny. That that penny is talking about a day's wages. And three measures of barley for a penny. So three times your day's wages. So if your day's wages is if just just gave you the analogy right now, you could go into Kroger and buy one pound of ground beef. Not dealing with the extra lean or the um, what do they call it? The um, it's like the uh, sirloin, like it's without less fat. So let's just say six six forty nine for that. But this is <coughs> the penny. It's talking about a day's wages. So your day's wages is one hundred sixty dollars. So hundred. This if it's three measures of barley for a penny. So. That's that's what it's talking about. $160 just to get that one item now. A measure of wheat for a penny. Bam. So here it is. 
imagine now going to the Kroger after the collapse of the dollar. You try to get that a measure of wheat for a penny, $160, your whole day's working, whatever it is you're doing, just to get one pack of ground beef. It's called hyperinflation. Ultimately, going to the collapse of the dollar. So hopefully this lesson was edifying. Till next time, Shalom and a Baba Ball.